I'm driving back from a business trip and spot a gypsy woman hitchhiking. I think, if I pick her up, she'll talk my ear off. If I don't, she'll curse me. Let's see what happens. I pull over and she hops in. Dear Golden Diamond, she says, let me tell your fortune. Sure, go ahead, I reply. She says, first truth, the moon shines but does not warm. True. Second truth, the goat does not shave his beard. Yep, true. Then she leans in. Third truth, your wife Mary is screwing the neighbor. No way, I say, that can't be true. She shrugs. Believe it or don't. I get home and tell Mary what the gypsy said. I mention the first two truths, and she agrees. I hesitate on the third, but she insists. Come on, just tell me. So I say. The third truth is that the neighbor Jim has such a tiny dick. Mary cuts me off. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> So, gallant knight Tristan prepares for a long campaign. Just before he rides off into the sunset, he hands his loyal friend the key to his stunning young wife's chastity belt. Take care of this for me, he says. While I'm away for years, you must protect her honor. Feeling heroic, Tristan rides away, confident in his friend's loyalty. But not long after, his friend gallops up to him, breathless and wide-eyed. Hey, he shouts, urgency in his voice. Good thing I caught you before you got too far. Tristan, concerned, replies, What's wrong? His friend leans closer and says, You gave me the wrong key! <laughs> <laughs> While I was working at the city zoo, they acquired a rare female gorilla. After a few weeks, the veterinarian determined she was in heat and needed a male companion. The zoo administration scrambled to find a suitable mate, but they had no luck. Then someone pointed out J.N., the cage cleaner, a huge, ugly guy standing at six and a half feet tall notorious for being a womanizer. They decided to approach him with a rather unusual proposal. Would he sleep with the gorilla for $250? He thought it over and finally agreed, but only under three conditions. First, no kissing. Second, he wanted no responsibility for any potential offspring. The admin quickly agreed to those two and then asked JN what his third condition was. JN replied, I need another week to find that $250. <laughs> um, I stroll into this pharmacy because I need to grab a condom. The pharmacist, an absolute knockout. I say, can I get one of those, please? She smirks and replies, oh, we've got a huge selection, ribbed, glow-in-the-dark flavored, you name it. I pick one, pay her, and she hands me my change with a playful wink. I think, what a fantastic pharmacy, great selection, and the pharmacist is an absolute angel. I can't help but compliment her. You know, this place is incredible, but I bet there's another pharmacy across the street that can't compete with you. She laughs and says, oh, trust me, we know all about them. They're always trying to outdo us with the best service and selection. So, feeling curious, I decide to check out the other pharmacy. To my surprise, the girl there is even cuter and friendlier. I ask for a condom, and she leans in, licking her lips, and asks, Do you want that wrapped up, or should I just put it on for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was with my husband trying to sneak in uh, a quick Sunday afternoon session and came up with a plan. With our 10-year-old son in the apartment, we needed a distraction. So we sent him out on the balcony and told him to keep an eye on the neighborhood. As soon as the coast was clear, we got to it. From outside, our son started his commentary. Hey, a car's being towed from the lot. An ambulance just passed by. Oh, looks like the Andersons have guests. Everything was going smoothly until the kids suddenly called out. Um, the Coopers are having sex. I froze. My husband, wide-eyed, shouted, Wait, how do you know that? Our son replied nonchalantly, Because their kid's out on the balcony, too. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, my friend invited me for a little drive, and as I'm leaving, my mom gives me that look and says, Scarlet, honey, let me tell you how this is gonna go. The car's gonna break down, you'll end up at a sketchy little hotel, and surprise, there'll only be one room. Of course he's going to say, oh, you take the bed, I'll be a gentleman and sleep in the chair, but beware because when you fall asleep, he'll pounce on you and disgrace me, you, and the whole damn family. I roll my eyes and head out. 
The next morning I come back and tell her, Mom, you were totally right. The car broke down. We found the hotel with one room. He offered me the bed and he settled in the chair, just like you said. She looks at me with raised eyebrows. So, don't worry, I flip the script. I let him get comfy on the bed. I took the chair and when he finally dozed off, I pounced on him. And believe me, by the time I was done, I disgraced him, his mom, and his whole family lineage. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>